Hey there, Commanders. Tonight I wanted to talk about the little odd duckling that has been sitting in the technology broker for a couple of weeks now. The prices have started to go up for the materials here, so uh, these are, are current as of time of recording, but I'm not sure if they're still going to keep going up or if this is the final price. Uh, but this is the engineered Seeker Missile Rack version 1. And it's an odd little duckling because I'm not entirely sure who this is intended for. Um, it's definitely not general audiences in the game. Uh, you can see here it's noted for a high capacity magazine with thermal cascade. Uh, and then there's some extra stuff going on in the attributes page that isn't normally going on when you just look at high capacity magazines. Now, if you'll recall, uh, during the community event they announced that this missile rack would be a combination of high capacity and lightweight. And so far this is pretty much the case. Although um, FDEV has gone in and tipped the scales a little bit, some of these numbers don't exactly match up with the engineering blueprints. Um, so I'll just go over that real quick so you guys can be uh, um, clear on what's exactly is going on with this module. But uh, this is the lightweight grade 5 blueprint. Uh, it's got a 90% mass reduction as the principal thing you're targeting with this blueprint, but you also get a 40% reduction in power draw and a 35% reduction in distributor draw. The module loses substantial integrity. Uh, so mass and integrity are basically directly transcribed onto the blueprint here. You'll see a 90% reduction in mass and a 60% reduction in integrity. This 20% module integrity is not very good. If um, if any of you happened to be wondering, this is like one direct hit from an enemy missile or a railgun volley away from malfunctioning, if not being rendered entirely inoperable. Well, power draw is actually being transcribed uh, a little bit. Um, it's a it's a combination. So if I go down here, you'll see that uh, normally high capacity increases power draw by 20%, uh, while the lightweight blueprint actually reduces power draw by 40%. So if you go over here, it's it's basically meeting in the middle, uh, and you get a 20% total reduction in power draw. Uh, DPS gets an increase of 11.1, .1, which you can ascribe to the rapid fire blueprint. Distributor draw is basically like here's the distributor draw that you get from lightweight. It says 40 here, uh, and the high capacity doesn't do anything to distributor draw. So there's an extra 5% floating around in here that I'm not I can't ascribe to anything. Uh, rate of fire is, normally it's a 10% increase for the grade 5 blueprint, but we've got 11.1 .1 for some reason. I'm not sure where that's coming from. Uh, in both of these cases, for distributor draw and rate of fire, I think FDEVs um, tapped them up a little bit. Uh, but this rate of fire increase isn't enough that I notice a substantial difference during testing. And then the ammo clip and uh, ammo maximums are basically on par for high capacity. There's no real change there. Now. The reason why I say that this isn't probably for everyone is because the integrity reduction makes this thing not suitable for shields down combat. Well, I, well that's, that's basically the main thing. Power draw, distributor draw, those aren't things that people worry about when they stick missile launchers on their ships. At least not typically, because the module is not a power monger by any real stretch. It's a little bit worse than kinetics, but it's not anywhere close to what the lasers are drawing. Uh, however, it is still a useful module. Uh, I would recommend, if you're interested in, in this at all, that it's, it's probably good to go for. But you have to recognize that it's extremely fragile. And not just to module damage from weapons, but lightweight modules will malfunction quicker as a result of overheating too. So you have to be uh, careful with how you choose to use this. If you put this on a combat ship, it needs to either be extremely fast, which the mass reduction facilitates greatly, if you've got small ships that use enhanced performance thrusters, then this is actually a really good module to stick on it. It'll, it'll handle you really well. Problem is that mass reduction doesn't really matter for most combat ships, at least not when you're talking about weapons. Most people are willing to accept the you know two, four, six tons of, of hardpoint uh, mass in exchange for the kinds of damage that some of these other hardpoints will produce. The lightweight blueprint doesn't really it doesn't really matter very much unless you're power constrained or your distributor is just absolutely being abused by another weapon. Uh, the regular high capacity magazine is is fine for most purposes. Now, if you're an explorer, if you want to preserve jump range, if you want to preserve speed, then yeah, this is a, a great module to go for. But 
uh, based on how much this thing costs, I think it's a lot of effort for a weapon that is kind of niche. It's not really something that that most combat ships would consider. Missiles occasionally, like, missiles are, are favored in open play PvP, the kind of non-consensual stuff that you encounter, because they are absolute terror when it comes to uh, any kind of shields down combat. But if you're in curated PvP, uh, Seeker Missile Racks have been banned from a lot of those tournaments for a long time. They're just flat not allowed for the sheer havoc that they wreak on your externals. This thing is uh, fairly expensive. Most of what you have to deal with is materials acquisition, which is okay. It's, it's easy to, to collect these and just hold them. Um, Proto-radiolic alloys, conductive ceramics, and hybrid capacitors are manufactured materials, which means the primary method to acquire these is going to be farming high-grade emissions. I would recommend the imp shielding farm in particular. Just go to Imperial Space, uh, filter your system map to Imperial Systems only, economical route plotting, and just hit as many Imperial Systems as you can in an hour. Scan the nav beacon at the central star, and it will expose all of the available high grades in the system. If you don't see any, or they're way too far away, or they don't have enough time for you to reach them, uh, just bounce to the next system and hit that over and over and over again. Eventually you'll collect enough Imperial Shielding that you can go to a material trader and exchange for these materials. Phosphorus is a raw material, which means that you've got to crystalline farm, which isn't really the most fun. Um, but let me see here, I can show you. I've done this in past videos. The crystalline farms are kind of a chore to get to. You need a good exploration ship or you need a fleet carrier to take you there. But I recommend any kind of materials farming that you do take place here. HIP 36601, it's about 1500 light years from the bubble. And you can pick up four different uh, grade four or five raw material sources in this one system. Uh, but the B star where this stuff orbits is pretty far away. So if you arrive in an exploration ship, it's probably about 15 minutes to actually get to any of these sites. But you can pick up polonium, ruthenium, technidium, and pterillium. The last thing you have to get in order to acquire this missile rack is, oh, sorry, that's the FSD, is osmium. Now, when I purchased, uh, I got three of these, osmium was, uh, the osmium cost was seven. It's now up to ten. Uh, but the osmium is actually reasonably easy to acquire because you can actually get it from fleet carriers. Uh, normally, this is a mineable, and you have to get a mining ship and go out and track this down yourself. But if you go to Inara, Data, Commodity, yeah, is it Commodity? Yeah, I think it's Commodities. And then search for Osmium. I just hit the letter O on my keyboard, and it takes you right down to the Q search. And then you want Exports. This is any facility that sells Osmium. In this case, it's, it's going to be all fleet carriers. There's no way to get around it. And from here, you can filter by distance, which I recommend, um, because you can see here there's a fleet carrier with 23 by price 305 updated a day ago. I recommend actually hitting these that are being updated more often, that are you know only a couple of hours old. Um, this one's only six hours old, and he's got 121 osmium, but you're going to pay a pretty penny for it. He's running at just about max price. Uh, you can also filter by price if you um, feel so inclined. Um, but you'll note that the cheapest places to get this are actually that's not too bad although i doubt he'll have it very long in fact being three days old it's uh it's probably gone by now um, but you'll note that some of these are like that's colonia this guy is way way far away um, i think colonia is the only known location in the bubble where you have an osmium hotspot and it had to be manually put in by the devs because normally uh raw metals don't have hotspots it's just uh I think it's just minerals and a couple of other specific things like void opals. But uh, that's not, once you've got the materials, the osmium you can pick up in like 15 minutes from a fleet carrier, assuming you've got the credits for it. If you have to pay max price, which is around 450,000 uh, credits, then you're looking at about four, a little over four million to get all the osmium you need. Uh, that's the seeker missile rack in a nutshell. I, I wouldn't put this very high on your priority list. If you've already got a high capacity missile rack, you've got most of this functionality. It's really only for explorers or people who want to use enhanced performance thrusters on small combat ships. Anyway, that's all I got for now, Commanders, so I will catch you later.